Hello and welcome back to Quartz Light, your car brochure channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Vauxhall Ventura. Welcome back and if you're new to the channel here on Quartz Light, we look at car brochures from around the world three times a week. So if you're interested in that, or indeed just looking back on cars you may remember or indeed have owned, then please consider subscribing. Today's episode, the Vauxhall Ventura. Now the Ventura, it had the Vauxhall uh, Victor body shell, but a little bit of a surprise under the bonnet. It actually had a 3.3 litre straight six from the larger Vauxhall Cresta to make it a quite interesting and so in some ways forgotten car. Now today's brochure is actually from 1974. I was only saying the other day when I was reviewing a Volkswagen Passat brochure from the 90s, how writing has changed. Really in the 90s, it's really very much facts, figures, not really too much in the way of creative writing. In the 70s, it's a different story. And certainly in this brochure, there are some uh, abusing paragraphs within it that really could have only been written in the 70s. So you'll want to see this. So without further ado, let's crack on with the brochure. Okay, so here it is in all its glorious pink, the Vauxhall Ventura. So the Ventura was introduced to the FD series between 68 until it was dropped from the FE series in 1976. And remember, this is a 74 brochure, so we're getting to the end of the run. Now, you can distinguish really from the Victor um, with its improved trim levels, um, but also this much more regal uh, grille. It's a, it's, it's a really showy grille, isn't it? And I do really like how it drops below the chrome bumper there. So it's very much a striking car. Now, if we turn the page, we get this rather nice uh, side shot of the Ventura. Um, and I think we're going to read some of this text because, you know, it's very creative how it's written. So let's start there. So it starts by saying, why a Ventura? Ventura is a civilised car, powerful and luxurious and, above all, effortless to drive. After, de after a demanding day at work, you'll appreciate the way it virtually chauffeurs you home through the traffic. And even after a long day's touring, you can step out of the Ventura feeling as if you've driven perhaps 30 miles instead of 300. It goes on to say it's not just the power steering that does it, nor the power brakes, nor the smooth, silent power of the remarkable unthirsty 3.3 litre six cylinder engine. So an unusual way of describing this large engine has been unthirsty. What does that even mean? Uh, you wouldn't dare call it an economical car with that big engine in there, um, but merely calling it unthirsty. A very strange turn of phrase really. It's not even the confident road holding, nor the silken ride, nor the superb seats and luxurious interior that make the Ventura so relaxing to drive. It's everything that thoughtfully engineered and integrally planned comfort can add up to. A completely unflappable car, at the car that can do whatever you ask of it with ease. Even greater ease if you specify the optional GM automatic transmission. And that goes for the estate car version of the Ventura 2. Then on the next page, we have a look at the interior. So, a very much typical 70s interior with this sort of fake wood. Quite a few dials on there, of course, and this sort of interesting little shelf on there. But all very angular and square um, but let's have a look at some of this text Ventura imagine you're going to take the Ventura for a test drive settle to into the extremely comfortable driver's seat and clip on the inertia rear seat belt you'll like the way it adjusts itself without getting you tied 
and tangled. The first thing you notice is the fascia in a rich burr walnut finish. Look at it closely. It's an indication of how well the entire car is designed and organised. With a quality and perfectionist attention to detail, you can readily see and experience. The instruments is complete and the dials are recessed to prevent distracting reflections. They include a rev counter, speedometer with total mileage and trip recorder, fuel gauge, oil pressure gauge, clock and a temperature gauge. All designed for easy reading and illuminated via a switch that allows you to select exactly the brightness you like. The controls for the heated rear window and heated and ventilation system are also illuminated. It goes on to say, the system incorporates a two-speed blower and phase-level fresh air vents with extractor slots concealed at the bottom of the rear window. So even if you, ha you use the cigar lighter and puff away at your Havana, you can motor in comfort with the windows closed. So let's just read that again. So even if you use the cigar lighter and puff away at your Havana, you can motor in comfort with the windows closed. Only in the 70s would you have something written in that way. So, you know, get your cigar out. Yep, you can puff away on your cigar. Don't worry about opening the window. Keep puffing it, we've got a good ventilation system. You know, what a, <laughs> what a very 70s little paragraph there. And also, perhaps we shouldn't be opening that, closing that window too much because it might break. But never mind. Let's, let's move on. So that you don't have to take a hand off the padded tr rim of the wheel more often than necessary, the minor controls are positioned on stalks mounted by the steering column. They actuate the two-speed wiper with single wipe action for clearing drizzle or splashes. The electric screen wash, headlamp dip flasher direction indicator with lane change position and horn. The centre console, finished in the rich look of walnut, houses the short, delightfully positive gear lever or the optional automatic selector. Finally, two small points that illuminate the detail through that's gone into the Ventura. A warning light tells you if you have left your handbrake on or if there's a drop in the pressure in one of the hydraulic brake circuits. And the door of the generously proportioned glove box doubles as a handy shelf. So, you know, we get an idea of the type of gentleman that this car is really aimed at in the 70s. So, we shall turn the page still further. Nice little image of that driving glove you should be wearing when you're driving your Ven Vauxhall Ventura. Quite nice looking seats, I must admit. Um, but let's have a look at some of this text. So whether you're lazing along leafy lanes or thrusting down the motorway with effortless whispering speed, you'll feel good in a Ventura. Inside, all is space and light and luxury. The opulence of its interior inst instills an indefinable air of well-being in driver and passenger alike. And in this respect, the Ventura is uncommonly accommodating. Its back seat, especially with the centre armrest downed, is more comfortable than the front seats of most other cars. That also goes uh, for the Ventura's front seats. You sit in them rather than on them. They allow 7 inches of fore and aft adjustment, recline at the touch of a lever, and like the back seats are upholstered in velvety brush nylon to keep you warm in winter and cool in summer. The rest of the Ventura's interior reflects the care with which we've designed the seating. Not only does the loop pile carpeting extend from door to door, it reaches up over the inside door sills and front map pockets to guard them against scuff marks. The rest of the doors are generously padded and upholstered to the glass line in ambia-like leather to look at, but softer, more resilient and easier to clean. 
In fact, the Rentora offers a standard of interior appointment that few, if any, cars in the price class can match. Okay, let's move on from these beautiful seats. To the next page, showing some little key features, this door and these twin square headlamps. Bit of a look at the boots, these wheels and looking at this automatic transmission. Let's have a look at some of this uh, information and there's also a little correction on there which is unusual. It says here Ventura, pictured here is the door trim treatment we mentioned over leaf, both practical and luxurious. It is little touches like that that lift the Ventura above run-of-the-mill motor cars. Little touches also like child-proof locks on the rear doors, coat hooks, padded sun visors with a vanity mirror. For the passenger and wallet for the driver. Courtesy light switches on all four doors, reversing lights and a distinctive vinyl roof. There are also some big things worth noticing, but we'd like to think you would take for granted in a Ventura. Power assisted steering for instance, superb handling and braking. And it talks about the wheels and it goes on to say four high powered headlamps, a cavernous 21 cubic foot boot, illuminated and fully carpeted with the covered spur wheel positioned so you can remove it without having it first remove your luggage. Bit of a correction on that though, carpets and spur wheel cover are not fitted in the boot of the Ventura Saloon. And positioned well forward beneath the boot a big 14.5 gallon fuel tank where it is less likely to be damaged in the event of a rear end collision. There's probably only one improvement you could think of making to the Ventura, the addition of the optional GM automatic transmission. Combined with power assisted steering, power assisted brakes and the effortless power of a silky smooth six cylinder engine, it makes the Ventura one of the most relaxing cars on the road today. Okay, let's see what else this brochure has to offer. It moves on to the Ventura estate. I always particularly like the shape of the estates, you know, the, the uh, Victor type of estate shape on there. Yes, it's not as practical because of that slope on the rear, but the design I think is particularly nice on the estate and you still have a lot of room, particularly when you fold those seats down. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the information. Okay, so this story is a little bit weird. Ventura Estate. At Vauxhall, we are aware of the dilemma of the man whose wide-ranging activities demand the ownership of both a personal luxury car and something with the space to haul bulky sporting gear. Business impedimenta or both? Now, for a start, you know, the Ventura, it's only for a man and a man with problems you know he needs a luxury car and he needs somewhere to put all that bulky sports gear which is how the Ventura estate came to be apparently it offers the same level of refinement as a saloon in every respect and is indeed identical except for the rear seat and rear end styling however open the hydraulically counterbalanced rear door and you'll find 27.14 cubic feet of space behind the rear seats. Fold the rear seat forward and that space grows to a huge 58.38 cubic feet with the entire floor covered in heavy duty carpeting so that your luggage also travels in luxury. The Ventura Estate allows you to enjoy the best of both worlds and that's the way we think you'll like it starts talking about lasting value you know because it's built because it's built to keep its good looks performance and resale values well into the years ahead talks about some of the standard equipments front seat belts a complete underbody seal power assisted dual circuit braking and front discs and self adjusting uh, rear drums and it goes a little bit on about uh, 
the safety standards there, this sort of like uh, impact absorbing telescopic steering column. A little bit about the, you know, the body protection on there. Well, there's a few more little bit of standard equipment here as well. Radial ply tyres, heated rear window, reclined front seats, fitted carpeting and alternator, two-speed wiper plus single wipe facility, electric screen wash, petrol saving viscous drive cooling fan, not basic equipment on the Viva standard, not sure what that means. Um, and it, yeah, like I said, it starts talking about the safety features on there as well. And there's a little bit on here about something it calls the testing story. Here it's talking about the you know testing these voxels, uh, crash protection, and driving them, and it also men mentions the Millbrook testing ground there as well and then finally it folds over to give the specification Ventura and Ventura Estate which we'll have a look at now I'm not going to read all this information obviously you can pause the screen if you really want to but it's a 3293 cc six cylinder engine talks a little about the the transmission the four speed all synchromesh uh, gearbox suspension steering and brakes the heating and ventilation which of course helps you with your Havana cigars your wheels and tires on those, those steel wheels of course at this time the very different equipment the electrics we've got the dimensions there of both the saloon and the estate. The estate dimensions continue on the next column. The curb weights, a bit of towing data, and rather nice to see. A pity they don't actually have the colours on there, but nice to see the colour schemes uh, flamenco red, uh, monaco white, yellow gold, ruby, sun glow. Uh, Cedar Green Starfire, Riviera Blue Starfire, Hot Grey Starfire, Champagne Starfire, uh, Olivine Starfire, Blue Fire, Bronze Gold Starfire and Platinum Starfire. Don't know what the Starfire implicates there but this is the 70s. Let's have some nice sounding uh, colours. And uh, you know, I appreciate that. The accessories you could get, a radio, an aerial, a stereo cassette player, uh, exterior mirrors, underriders, rear seat belts, towing attachments, trailer electrical coupling kit, fog lamps, locking petrol caps, front and rear mud flaps, parking lamp, hazard warning device. Interesting to note that it, you, know, you could have actually spec'd it to have rear seat belts, which is certainly early, isn't it, in the 70s wonder if anyone actually specced it that way and a little bit of information there the brochure there from August 1974 we just end on the back page where it's just telling us you know it's all right reading the brochure but why not take it for a test drive and a nice sort of rear view of this car um, particularly like this sort of uh, rear end actually on the Ventura this one's been the automatic but I like this sort of like shiny part and the badge you know, I mean, quite a big boot, really, didn't it? Very interesting also is this sort of, like, slightly off-centre exhaust. Yes, on the estate, there's another little bit of an image of that off-centre exhaust, which is a little bit unusual. OK, so there we go, the Vauxhall Ventura. And probably one of my favourite brochures, this one, actually, uh, because the car takes you back to the 70s, but the writing takes you back even more any memories of the Vauxhall Ventura certainly jot that down in the comments they're always lovely to read but for now we'll say thank you so much for watching today's episode please do like and subscribe we'll see you very soon take care and goodbye